Hello, hello, hello. You're tuning into another episode of The Wonder King Show. Today's second topic, Warren Sharp calls out Gregory P. Roman and the Ravens. So, <laughs> he was pretty much stating what we already know, but it was something that had to be reiterated to try to understand even further the foolishness that was taking place in Baltimore the past couple seasons. So, pretty much, I'm going to read it to you. There was a passage that was being written about the Ravens and Warren Sharp, of course, from Sharp Analytics or Sharp Football at Sharp Football on Twitter. Commented back, and I'm going to read you the snippet. It says, in four seasons with offensive coordinator Greg Roman, Baltimore primarily, that means most of the time for a lot of people that are going to, you know, nitpick words, huddled up and ran the play that was called. <laughs> Under Munkin, Jackson can slide the pass protection to one side if he sees a defender blitzing or switch a receiver's route if the cornerback lines up a certain way. So, Warren Sharp comes with <laughs> pretty much a stab at them and says this. <clears throat> this is what he says, quote it. It's malpractice. Anybody that understands the medical field fears the word malpractice. You understand? But I'm going to keep reading it. It says, it's malpractice to not allow a professional NFL quarterback to audible and adjust protections. Always reads as completely insane. So it wasn't just us type of Raven fans that were feeling that way. Now they're calling out, bro, that's absolutely, you know, asinine for them to do that with somebody like Lamar Jackson. And that's what we've been trying to say. But I'm going to keep going. Insane, when a team changes OC and it reported that the QB is finally allowed to slide the pass protection. Ridiculous Lamar wasn't given that freedom before. Now, I heard a lot of people responding to this saying, well, is it even proven that Lamar understands or can read defenses? Heisman Trophy winner. Unanimous MVP. Six years now going into the league. And you're asking, wonder if he could read defenses? Oh! Y'all are starting to get me angry. Because this is what surrounds the Ravens and Lamar Jackson. A cloud of inherent ignorance. And that's fact. It's funny now that everything's being called out. I remember when Quadri, and I'm not throwing shades at Quadri. I'm just showing that he was one of the um, proponents of it, saying that, you know, Shannon Sharp. All these people were saying, oh, Greg Roman's not to blame. It's Lamar. <laughs> oh, this system's so amazing, so great. Lamar needs it. He can't operate without it. Without this offense, there'd be no sunshine when he's gone. Ain't no sunshine when Gregory P. Roman's gone. He's always on my mind. Every time he goes away. I know, 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 I know. That they were doing foolishness in Baltimore. And that's why I keep trying to reiterate the state and supplant the thought and knowledge about this team past as much as us ingratiating and getting ready for its future because that's what he had to deal with. I'm talking about Lamar and the receivers and the running backs dealing with Gregory P. Roman. And there's a lot of people that are Roman apologists. They're like, well, he won an MVP. Could you imagine how much more dynamic 
Lamar Jackson could have been in those previous seasons if he was allowed to switch protections. <laughs> Maybe switch up a route that he sees. Because remember, um, what uh, Roman's in the box. He's not connected with the sideline. That's why, you know, I, it wasn't so much me being an unruly fan. It was more of me feeling sorry for the these professionals wasting five seasons because they can't get those um those years back. They can't all those hits, all those tackles, all those miles run, all the sweat that was sacrificed. <clears throat> no, you can't. They can't get none of that back. None of it wasted. And that's why, you know, I hear some people talk so highly of Todd Munkin, and I'm truly hoping that he turns out to be everything that this team and fans are saying that he is. Because we are coming from the Dark Ages. That's what we had a quarterback win in spite of the OC. And I bring that up because today's a perfect day to even say that because when you look at someone like a Justin Herbert who is putting up 5,000 passing yards, 22 to 25, maybe 30 passing touchdowns, right? They say his coach isn't good. He's just, he he's winning despite his coach. He's winning despite his players. He's winning despite the calls being made. Same thing with Joe Burrow. So then I'm like, okay, well, you'll say that about them, but you won't say about Lamar. And somebody brought up Lamar when given the opportunity to control the offense of the line of scrimmage. All the games that he has done that, they have been absolutely unstoppable. They have looked like, I, I'm going to show my age again. Remember NCAA Football, I think it was 2000, 2003, NCAA football with, uh, what's his name? I think he was like a Washington, Washington Husky or it was like a blue, it was like a blue team, blue and yellow team. I think he was like a Wolverine. You know what I mean? I forgot his name. But the offenses would look like that playing those games, going through the motions of that. And anybody that played NCAA you know what I'm saying? Football on PS2 and stuff like that knows exactly what I'm talking about. Up and down the field, you can't stop it. It's whoop, doop, whoop de whoop. Touchdown. <sighs> you know, I, I'm actually very grateful that we're coming out of the dark ages because it needed to be done. Now we can actually see what this offense is capable of. And the funny thing is, for all that they've done for Lamar this offseason, and I know I'm going to catch flack for saying this, this is the best probably overall wide receiving core you could argue that we've ever had. And it's still not top five, top seven, top eight in the league. That should tell you all you need to know. That's why, you know, I'm so happy we've got off of Roman. It was a losing battle, and he never evolved. I'll tell y'all this right now. If Roman evolved, learned from his mistakes, aggregated the, the, the pass game, and blended it perfectly into his running game, he'd be great. But somebody said this, and I think it needs to be said. Roman is a is a OC but he's just pretty much, he's a glorified run coordinator. And look, I'm not mad at the man. He made his money. He could take care of his family. Great job. But I'm going to call a spade like a spade. But tell me what you think down there in the comments section. If I'm tripping, if Warren Sharp is tripping, and, you know, you know, Greg Roman was just the bee's knee. But that's another episode of the Wonderkin Show. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. You know how we get down, fun and laughs. But everything we talk about is rooted in what? Facts and truth. Please do remember, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. Do love the comments. Just 
be respectful, and I have no problems or qualms. And if you would like to donate to this channel to help it grow, the bottom of the screen is a QR code. You can find that in the Cash App. That's where it leads you to. And the Cash App is located in the description of every video, of course. And the name of it is Money Sign The Wonder Kin Show. Also available to Patreon. If you want behind the scenes access, especially when the regular season is going on, questions from subscribers, Discord, sweepstakes, free merch, all those things, that's how you do it. But once again, this is the one that can show. This show is Nitro signing off, and as always, you guys know my slogan. Peace. And I am out of here. Yerp.